Hi everyone, I'm Emma and you might have seen me in other fashion makerspace videos. So I'm not just a model, <laughs> but I'm also an illustrator and I'm also an instructor. So today, I have Clifford with me and he's going to learn how to make baby booties. Hi everyone, I'm Clifford. I work in human resources, so I attended a class here. I'm here to learn baby booties today. Mm. Okay, so Clifford, on a scale of 1 to 10, how confident do you think you are for today's challenge? Wow. The time we went through the FS Fashion Maker Space 101 class, yes. I think I'll rate myself around an 8 or 9. And that is the basic class, right? Yeah. Basic class, yeah. So I'm going to give you maybe a 1. Because <laughs> in today's So What Challenge, what's going to happen is I'm just going to guide you through verbal instructions and you're going to craft out a baby booties for me. Okay, so I can't see what you're doing? No. Okay. Well, and you I... can't peek and everything. So I'm not going to show you. Yeah, I'm just going to guide you through with verbal instructions. Oh, then I think I only rate myself a 2 in that case. I will just still give you a 1. <laughs> Okay. okay. Yeah, so let's just have fun and we will see how this would turn out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's going to happen is he's going to do either side and I'm going to do either side and at the end of the day, we're going to see if both of us would match up. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to do your best and we'll let God do the rest. Okay. Yeah, so let's get started. To make a pair of baby booties and mittens, you will need 0 0.5 meters of main fabric, 0 0.5 meters of lining fabric, 0 0.5 meters of interfacing, 30 cm of your elastic band, a sewing machine, thread, and bobbin, drafting ruler, fabric marker, thread snippers, fabric scissors, paper scissors, Fashion Maker Space paper templates, dressmaking pins, and sewing needle, and also the iron. Okay, so Clifford, right in front of you, you've got all the mat materials that you need for the baby booties. Okay. So now what I need you to do, right, is to take the main fabric, which is the printed fabric, the one in yellow. Okay. Okay, so you can place the other materials on the side first. Okay. Yeah, so you empty your space, make sure it's a nice place for you to cut your fabric. So mm -hmm. we're going to start with the boat panel. So if you have a look at your baby booties, you realize there's a sole that looks like your feet mm -hmm. and another panel that looks like a boat, like a sampan. Okay. Yeah, okay, so we're going to start with the sampan first. Okay. So what we have to do is have a look at your fabric you, you would realize that on one side, there is a cut edge. A cut edge? Yes. Or in fact, three edges that are cut. And on the other side, is a very nice straight uh, edge that will never fray. Okay. So it doesn't have any fibers that are picking out at all. Mm -hmm. Do you find that? Yep. Yeah, so that is what we call the salvage. Okay, so that's the one with the clean fabric. Yes, so okay. that part is like a finishing that doesn't fray and is very firm. Okay. Yeah, so when you see that, right, what I need you to do is have a look at your paper pattern again for the mm. boat panel. Okay. You realize that we need to cut two main fabrics, main pieces for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I will need you to first open up your fabric nicely mm -hmm. and then fold the fabric into half. Make sure that the salvage is parallel to your fold line. Okay, so fold the fabric exactly into half. It doesn't have to be exact. So, in this case, if you want to save your fabric, right, you realize that there's a ruler by your side, uh -huh. you would have to fold the fabric first mm -hmm. and then make sure that the salvage is parallel to the fold line. Okay. You got that? I think so. Okay. Yeah, so once you have that, make sure that the fold of the fabric is big enough for you to place the boat panel onto the fabric. Okay, looks big enough. Yeah, can you just double confirm with uh, double check with me, right? Make sure that as you measure, let's say from the salvage edge right to the fold line, if it is 18 cm or how many cm that you folded, on the other edge, it should be also the same distance. Okay, so now place the boat panel onto the fabric mm -hmm. and you will see a very long arrow that goes across the fabric. Mm -hmm. I mean the paper pattern. Mm -hmm. And that is your grain line. Okay. Yeah, so what you need to do with the grain line is you will have to measure again, place the pattern on your fabric, make sure that the grain line 
measures parallel to the selvage again. So you realize that the line is super long. Mm. So from one end of the arrow, if you were to measure it right next, uh, right beside your selvage, right? That distance should be the same throughout till you reach the end of the other side of the arrow. Oh, okay. I think I know what you mean now. Great. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I hope so too. You're making me very nervous. Oh, I think I know what you mean now. Sure? Yeah, hold on. Uh. Yeah. I think my line wasn't as parallel as I thought it was. Okay. Yeah, so make sure it's parallel first. What happens if it's not parallel? Then your um, the way you cut your fabric, it will start to walk in a different direction. So this is what we call straight grain. And let's say if it's not in a straight grain manner, if you were to place it diagonally, then that will be biased, which means your fabric will start to uh, stretch a little bit. Oh, you make sewing sound like lower. <laughs> Hurry up. Okay, I think more or less. Uh. Okay. Okay. Hurry up. Okay. Hurry up. Great. Okay. So have you got your grain line placed parallel to the salvage? Do I have to wait? No. Nope. How long must I wait? No need to wait anymore. Okay. So now you have to take your pins and you pin it down. Make sure as you pin down, your grain line again should be parallel to the fold line or salvage. Okay. So in this case, right, you realize that everything is parallel. It doesn't matter if your grain line is with reference to the fold line or the salvage. You understand, right? Yes. Yeah. So pin it down on the edges of your paper pattern. As you realize that your fabric is pretty thin, uh -huh. you would just have to pin more just so that as you cut, your patterns, your fabric would not shift as much. So pin on all four corners. Uh, this is not exactly a corner. So just pin around the edges of the whole boat. Oh, okay. So at the top and at the bottom as well. So the idea is just to keep your paper pattern on your fabric intact just so that as you cut, right, no fabric will be shifting underneath the paper pattern. You understand? Yes. Okay. Okay, so now you have to take your paper, uh, fabric scissors. Fabric scissors. Yep, and start to cut them out. So for cutting fabrics, it's a little different from cutting your paper. So you know, if you are, are you right-handed? Yes. Okay, normally when you are right-handed, you would take the paper with your left hand and you will start cutting on the right side of the paper. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Right now, you have to do the opposite way, cut from the left side of the paper pattern. Cut from the left side of the paper pattern? Yes. Okay. So make sure that as you are cutting, the fabric should be placed on the table. You shouldn't be lifting it up. Okay, why, uh, why must we start cutting from the left? Good question. So when you cut from the left side, you make sure that the cutting is just more accurate as compared to the right side because whatever you are lifting up is whatever you don't need for the fabric. So oh. let's say for example, mm -hmm. if you were to cut from the right side of the fabric, you will realize that your left hand is holding on to the piece that you want. So that makes it very unstable oh. when you are lifting it up, it will not be uh, firmly placed on the table or flatly placed on the table. Okay. So you just want to make sure the idea is to lift whatever you don't need. Okay. So in this case, you let's say if you were to cut on the left side, mm -hmm. yeah, then okay. you'll be very close to the edge. Okay, yeah, so I, you have to faster cut now. Okay, do I cut through both layers or just one layer? Both of the, layers. Both layers of the fabric. Yeah. So good question as well. Why you have to cut through both layers? Why do we do a fold? Because for your feet, you have two sides. So when you cut it this way, mm -hmm. you are making sure that you, you just have to cut once and then you have both sides. If I'm making the left side or the right side of the booty, is there, I don't know, any difference in the way I cut or... What do you mean? Like, if I'm making the left side of the booty compared to the right side of the booty... Oh, no, no, no. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But, uh, again, good question. So, when as you're folding, right, for this fabric is batik, that's why it doesn't have a right or wrong side of the fabric. But mm. normally, when you get a printed fabric, it will definitely or most probably have a right and wrong side. So when we talk about right and wrong side, it means that the wrong side is normally the faded side. And then the vibrant side is where the world would see. Right? Hmm. Okay, yeah. So in that case, just make sure that as you're folding, the right side is facing you. The so right whatever you're facing. folding inwards is the wrong side of the fabric. How close to the boat can almost I cut? Uh, as accurately as you can. Oh. The... 
You have one minute. Where are you at? Uh, one, one minute away. <laughs> you have 30 seconds. <laughs> so I'm not going to wait. Okay, so I'll just uh, speak as you're cutting. So you realize that along the edge of the boat, right, on the left side, you will see two little T's. Yeah. Yeah, so that is what we call the notch. Mm -hmm. Yep, and for the notches, right, you just have to, once you cut out the paper, uh, once you cut out the fabric, you will have to do a little snip along the two T's. So how much to cut, just have to cut along the edge. Cut till you reach the end of the T. So you should have one notch and another notch. Two notches on one side of the boat panel. Okay, hold on now. I'm going to ask you to repeat that again soon. Cause nope. Just making sure everything's accurate. Finish ready, but... Okay. You know, just want to make I sure can still hear you cutting. No, no, no. That one is... <laughs> it's what? Uh, trimming the edges. Touching up, touching up. No, I can still hear you cutting. Yeah. It's so bad. It's got a lot to touch up. It's so bad. How confident, how confident are you now? Maybe like a 0 0.5? Uh, Rate yourself. Now, uh, I think I would need to go through FS101 again, maybe. Mm, I think so too. Okay, Clifford. So mm. right now, your baby booties should have a main fabric. And if you have a look at the instructions again, I will need a lining. So where does the lining come in? The lining would be the grey fabric. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like I mentioned just now, there's a right side and a wrong side of the fabric, correct? Yes. So I didn't check how you were cutting your fabric just now, but we'll try again. Okay. So it's the same uh, rules as, the same instructions as what you did for the main fabric. So what you have to do is first, find the right side of the lining. In this case, the right side of the lining is the light grey side. Okay, uh, why, why is the light grey side the right side of the fabric? Good question. So in this case, if you find that the light grey side and the uh, dark grey side is the same, you're just finding the nicer uh, print or let's say if, the, if it does have a texture, then that's where you're going to use that side as your main side of okay. the right side of the lining. Okay. Yeah, so in this case, you can see that the light grey side has a bit of texture, which is mm. why we're going to use that. Okay. Yeah, so make sure you find the salvage edge again and mm. then fold it parallel to the fold line. Hold on. Uh. So the light grey side is on the outside always. Correct. So when I fold, that means the dark grey side should be showing now. The No, the dark grey side should be uh, folded inside. Whatever you are seeing is the light grey. Oh, okay. So I always see the light grey. Yes. So you are always seeing the right side. Okay. So I'm just going to give you the instructions. Again, make sure that the salvage is parallel to the fold line. And as you pin, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how you were pinning, but make sure that as you were pinning, because just now you spent quite a bit of time. Mm. So I'm thinking you might have pinned it wrongly. Make mm -hmm. sure that you're pinning on the paper pattern oh. so that the paper pattern can be firmly placed on the fabric so that you can cut. Uh, so what I, does that all mean? Uh, no, so I have to pin on the paper pattern. Correct. Yeah, yeah, I was doing that just now. Okay. You have to pin inside the paper pattern oh, around yeah. the edges. Correct, correct. And that's how you can hold the paper pattern down, right? Yeah, yeah. Because some people, they might, you know, mistakenly pin at the corners. Pin at the corners of where? Uh, of the fabric. Oh! Yeah, amateurs, right? Surprise me. Did you do the notch for your main fabric? The little T? I guess you didn't. Do what? it now. What T? Okay, so if you have a look at your paper pattern again, uh -huh. uh, along the boat edge, the uh -huh. straighter edge, do you see two T's? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's what we call the notch. It's for you to mark your positioning. Okay, so I cut. So you would have to cut along that little T. So how much of a snip that you need to do? Just snip till you reach the edge of that T. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so make sure that you place the pattern nicely on your fabric if let's say you've already taken it out. Mm -hmm. Align it very nicely and then you do that notch. That's your positioning marking. If you don't do that, the whole um, orientation or for example, the positioning will be slightly off. Mm. Especially when you align with the grey fabric, right? Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Where are you at now? 
just uh, finish pinning the paper fabric. Okay. Okay. Yep, and you can start cutting them. To start cutting, huh? Yep. Also on the left side, right? Yes. Just go. Just cut. Just cut. Also two layers, right? This one. Yes. And you have to repeat the same step for the interfacing. So now you, you get the whole picture already. Same thing, interfacing, you will find the salvage. Do the same as well. Okay. Salvage to the fold. And make sure that the grain line is also parallel to the salvage. I don't know if you did that. Yes. Okay, maybe not. What's that? Pause for. I was focusing on the cutting. <laughs> then what happens on the right side of the fabric? Do I cut, finish and turn around? Then I can still keep it on the left side. What do you mean? Like, because you know there's a left side and a right side of the fabric, right? So once I finish cutting the left side of the fabric, then yeah. the right side, I... Oh yeah, yeah, you can, you can just turn it around. Turn it around so that... Uh, yeah. Or let's say if your fabric is a bit bigger, it's very hard to turn, then you have no choice, you have to cut it on the right from the uh, right side. Okay, okay. Yeah. So in this case, because your pattern is very small, you can just turn it around. But for example, if you are cutting bigger patterns, you might not be able to turn it. So you still have to practice both sides. Okay. Is this actually your first time cutting fabric? Uh yeah, because FS yeah. No, mm. this is my second time actually. I just finished cutting a main fabric just now. Ah! Be good. <laughs> Such experience. Plus one. Why am I waiting? Time. Hold on. Ah. Okay, you are notching, right? Sorry? Were you notching? What's notching? That little T. You have uh, to do it for the lining fabric as well. No, no, no. Still far off from that notching space. What have you been cutting? I'm very worried. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seriously very worried. What have you been cutting? So in total, your um, flat for this baby booties would have three fabrics. Am I right? You here with me? Yep. The two main, main, two lining, and two interfacing. How accurate does it have to be? More or less, right? Mm. If you are moving on to the interfacing, let me know. Okay, doing the snips of the T's now. Great. Okay. Okay. So now take your interfacing piece. What's an interfacing piece? the white fabric that you have there so okay. you realize that for the interfacing right what it does is it helps to stabilize the fabric and also to create like a body so you make sure that when you uh, fuse this onto your main fabric your booty can stand upright very nicely okay. but at the same time uh, it does not uh, compromise with the comfort as well because the interfacing is pretty thin okay. yeah so, so for your interfacing there is a side that is shiny and on the other side that's matte Mm -hmm. So that shiny side is where the adhesive, the glue is, and that's how you're going to fuse it onto your main fabric. So what we need to do is, make sure that the shiny side is facing you. So that is like the right side. Okay. And you would have to apply the same technique as what you did for your main fabric and your lining. Okay, so salvage first. Yep. And then parallel. Yep. Shiny side up. Shiny side up. Yep. And... Grain line parallel to the salvage again. Grain line parallel to the salvage again. Okay, so I'll double. Are you cutting already? Soon. Okay, you're pinning, is it? Yep. Okay, just make sure again, the shiny side is the right side. The shiny side is yeah. the right side up. So I tend to have a lot of people getting this wrong. Means that whatever you're folding in should be the matte side. Oh. Oh! Okay, so I should always be seeing... So basically, for no matter what fabric I want, I should always be seeing the right side of the fabric. Yep. Okay. So once you're done with this, we are going to move on to the sole. Let me know once you're done. We still have a lot of cutting to do. The, for the interface also, you need, need the snip, right? Yes. Woohoo! Okay. Okay. I think I'm done. Yeah, then we'll move on to the sole. Okay, Clifford, so now we are moving on to the sole. Okay. It's the same idea as what you did for the flap. Mm -hmm. We will have to first take the main fabric. We're going to cut two pieces. 
Okay, for so the lining, cut to as well as the interfacing. Okay, so, so don't need you, all the boat stuff anymore, right? No. Okay. So you have to place them all away. Okay. Your workstation should be clean again and mm -hmm. we'll start with the sole. Sole of the feet, okay. Yeah. So it's the same. I would like to repeat again. Your salvage should be parallel to your fold line. Salvage should be parallel to the fold line. Yep. So the salvage is the longer straight, right? Longer straight? The yeah. edge that doesn't fray. Oh, so, edge doesn't fray, yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you start cutting off? Okay. What are you waiting for? So do the same thing, I just... Yes. Yes. Lona. So fast, what are you cutting now? Uh, cutting the salvage, salvaging my salvage. <gasps> Why are you cutting the salvage? Look, first just now those. Yeah, it was not straight just now. I... How to explain? Uh? Okay, never mind. So we just fold it in, make sure it's parallel again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to cut the salvage, but. Okay, we'll see. Okay. And then, um, same thing, I right? just cut along the sole, like one over. Mm. Okay. The parallel reason is it because for like printed fabrics, you want it, I don't know, to be even? No, the parallel is to make sure that you're following the grain. Following the grain? Uh. Yeah. So for this print, it's pretty organic. You don't really have like a. For example, checker or stripes to follow, so it's fine. Okay. Can you talk to me while you're cutting? Can, can. Okay. What do you mean by when you were cutting the salvage? Why do you have to trim the salvage? No, well, because the salvage, you say, is the part that didn't frame. Uh. Yeah, but the salvage is always straight. So, if you're cutting the salvage to make it straight... Means... Means... It's not the salvage. It's not the salvage anymore! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. You'll okay, find out later. Okay, I'm done with the main fabric. Good! Not bad, now right? we move on to the lining. Move on to the lining. Yeah. Can you just make sure again you have the right side of the lining facing you? So whatever you're folding inwards is the wrong side. Whatever I'm facing inwards is the wrong side. Okay, so yes. salvage is the side that doesn't fray. Yep. You can identify the salvage, especially from your grey fabric, right? That it has that uh, furry texture at the side. Mm. And you will see uh, some strip of uh, threads that's in red or maybe white. Mm. That's your salvage. Okay, and I should always fold so that the right side is always facing up. And once yes. again, I make sure it's parallel. Parallel, good. Parallel... I can sense you might not be very good at your cutting, but you're a very trying person. Yeah, I sense that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's good because everything in life is of trying times. Right, and let God do the rest, right? Correct. Okay, can okay, ready. So, cut the sole. You know the sound of the cutting is a bit different eh? Mom, how does it sound different? I don't know, it sounds very rough. Hey, is it the wrong scissors? No, I don't think so. This sounds very different. <laughs> From your regular fabric scissors, okay. Your fabric scissors, right? The difference is fabric scissors is the one that doesn't have the red rim. Doesn't so, have the red rim, uh. Yeah, normally when we cut uh fabrics, you should have a fabric scissors because it's generally sharper than your average scissors. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah. your average scissors, you use it to cut papers, use it to cut zippers or right. anything else. Yeah. Yeah. The last one is the interfacing. Hurry up. Oh yeah, right. we don't have all day for you. Interfacing, is there salvage also? Yep. The salvage of the interfacing is where you see a lot of holes. So a very good question also, how do you identify the salvage? Normally on the edges of a salvage, it's either identified by a strip of white uh, finishing that is not printed 
or you will see little little uh, dots on the edge of the fabric and that's where you can identify that's a salvage thank you oh little little dots on the edge of yes. the fabric okay okay i think i got it now okay so the shiny side is the adhesive side yes and that should be facing up or down is that the right side or the wrong side up up okay up. so when i fold in the matte side then this one doesn't go right yeah the matte side will be folded inwards uh okay as long as you see that the shiny side is facing you what if it's not enough huh? uh how much not enough oh, i think just nice actually okay just nice mm. yeah you try to try to save the fabric okay try to save the fabric huh? mm. but save also the interface, you mean. yes save the interfacing but at the same time you have to make sure that the you are following the green line and the salvage everything mm. yeah, should be just nice okay done with the interfacing doing the last t now yeah okay then we're going to move on to ironing are you sure? So yeah. can you lay out also your paper, uh, your pattern pieces to make sure that you have two pieces of um, interfacing for your flap, two pieces of lining for your flap, and also two pieces of main fabric for your flap. Okay, so two pieces of each fabric. Yeah, and also for the sole, you should have two of each also, main lining and interfacing. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. Okay. Okay, okay, yep, you got it? Yep. Okay, good. Then let's move on to ironing the interfacing. Okay, Clifford, so now we are on to interfacing and I would like you to have a look at the sole of the baby booty first. Okay. So, so. you should have two sets of your sole for your baby booties. Mm -hmm. Again, the grey fabric is your lining fabric. Okay. Your printed fabric is the main fabric okay. and also the interfacing that you have. Okay. So let's start with interfacing the main fabric, which is the printed fabric. Okay, interfacing the main fabric. Yes, just for one of the sole. Okay. Okay, so for your interfacing, the shiny side is where the glue is. Mm -hmm. So we would have to face down onto the wrong side of the fabric. Okay, but the main fabric has no wrong side, right? Yes, okay. so for your fabric, in this case, it's batik. It doesn't have a right and wrong side. You will just have to establish either side would be the right side or wrong side. Okay. Yeah, so just choose one of the sides. For example, if your fabric tends to be a bit creased, remember to iron it out first. Okay. So iron the, iron the fabric Iron out. the main fabric, not the interfacing yet. Okay. Okay. So now the next thing we got to do is to actually place the shiny side down onto the wrong side of the fabric. In mm -hmm. this case, the main fabric's wrong side should be facing you. Okay. Yes, and then place the shiny edge down. Shiny edge down. Yes, so while you're doing this, right, I'll just go through with you. Make sure that the iron's heat is turned all the way to maximum, which is your cotton or linen setting. Okay. That's number one. Okay. And then for number two, you would have to make sure that your steam iron is turned to non-steam setting as well. Non-steam setting. Yes. So for interfacing, make sure that there's no steam because the steam from the uh, iron would actually dilute the adhesive slightly. Okay. So we don't want that. Alright, and then the next thing is make sure that the timing is long enough so that you can fuse your interfacing together with your main fabric. So okay. how long is it? For this thickness, it should be around like 10 seconds. 10 seconds. So it depends on, correct. So it depends on how long, uh, how thick your interfacing is. If your interfacing is thicker, generally you will need a bit more time. Okay. So in the future, if you're trying this on your own, what you can do is just test out a separate piece okay. and do a bit of testing. Alright, so number one is your heat. Number two, no steam. Number three is timing. Number four would be pressure. So make sure that as you're pressing down onto your interfacing, you shouldn't, doing, you shouldn't be doing it in an ironing motion. Mm. It should be a stamping motion one spot at a time. Okay. And then when you're pressing on that spot, make sure that it has pressure on it. So what you have to do is just press down on one edge mm. and then press it down. Okay, but this one is small enough for the whole iron. Can I just put the whole iron? You can. It? Yes, you can. Okay. And then so wait for like 10 seconds. I can hear there's a bit of steam, so you might want to just check the setting okay. okay so let's say if you are doing it half so you just have to make sure that once you've ironed the half and then turn to the other side also and then press down again so you count to around like 10 seconds the longer you go right sometimes the fabric might just get burnt so try not to 
stay in that um, okay. position too, for too long. Okay. Yeah, so if let's say you are putting the entire iron onto your sole, that's fine as well. How so once you you're sorry? How hard do you have to press for this? Um how hard you have to press? Just press down with both of your hands. Okay. Yeah. The idea is to make sure that the interfacing is fused very nicely with your main fabric. Okay. I've done with one side. Yes. I do for then the other? let's continue to the other side. Okay, I'm done. Okay. And we will keep the soles aside so you can just put it on the side and okay. now we'll move on to your flap flaps okay yes so for your flaps you would have two sides as well mm -hmm. so at this point because of our batik print we don't have a right or wrong side okay. so what you need to do is first have a look at your lining fabric okay so your lining would have a right and wrong side right and wrong side so first take either of the lining fabric first place the right side facing you Right side facing me, that's the light grey side, right? Yes. Okay. So the golden rule of sewing is always uh -huh. right side of both fabrics facing together. This means that, why do I need to explain this to you? Is because when we are interfacing, we have to make sure that the booty is interfaced at the correct direction. Okay. Yeah, if not, what's going to happen, you will end up with both sides of the same leg. Okay. Same foot, I mean. So now, place your main fabric on top of your lining now. Main fabric on top of my lining, on yeah. top of the right side of the... Correct. Okay, interface down or main fabric down? Uh, not the interfacing. Okay. So, it's the main fabric. So, okay. right now, your bottom layer should be your lining and your main fabric. Okay. Yeah, so when you have this, right, it means that both of the right sides are facing together. If you were to flip it upwards, mm. right side should be facing right, right side. Yeah. Yeah, you got that. Great. Then now, take the interfacing piece, make sure that you match your patterns together. Why? Because your booty is not symmetrical. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this means that the um, interfacing has to follow your main fabric. So make sure that the shiny side is, of course, placed down onto the main fabric. Mm -hmm. And then it has to be in the correct orientation. Yep. You got that? Yep, got yeah, that. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to get the orientation correct. Okay. Okay, so now also establish the other side of the booty as well. So you don't get mixed up with the interfacing later on. If not, again, you would end up with both sides of the same foot. Okay, so the light grey side, then the main fabric, and then the interface. Yes, Okay. correct. So in, uh, for example, if you have a fabric that already has a right and wrong side, that's much easier to see. You, mm -hmm. you can just interface uh, onto the wrong side. But in this case, we have to do this, just so that we can figure out where's okay. the left and right. Okay, so now take away your lining fabric at the bottom, and interface like what you did for your sole. Oh, okay. So the main fabric, mm -hmm. and then I put the interface, shiny side down. Yep. Make sure alignment is correct. Yes. I'm not sure about your cutting, but you just try your best. Yeah, I, I did. Looks pretty good. Okay. And then uh, 10 seconds or until the whole thing is stuck together, right? Yes. So sometimes if you are, for example, in future, if you are buying a thicker interfacing, you can always try 10 seconds first. And let's say if you bring up your iron and then you feel like it's not fully fused onto your main fabric, that's where you can interface again. And just go over it for a few more seconds. Okay. Make sure to do in a stamping motion. Uh, if, the, if for example, right, yeah. the cutting is not so... <laughs> Good, then what do you do? <laughs> okay, if your interfacing is slightly peeking out of your main fabric, uh -huh. that's fine. If your interfacing happens to be a bit smaller than your main fabric, just make sure that the overall um, pattern has got the interfacing. Okay. So, we will talk about seam allowance later, but just try your best to align the interfacing so that all the edges would meet. Okay, so I do this for both sides. Yes. Okay. And we are done with the interfacing now. Nice. Yeah, so now you should be left with one side of your booty that has the lining mm -hmm. and then the main fabric together with your interfacing and on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. You have one set. Got it. Okay, great. 
Then let's move on to sewing now. Yes, you're right. Okay. Nice. Okay. Right. Seems like you're better at sewing. You visualize <laughs> better. Okay.